SC123, you got it? I just blow your eardrums out? Are you good? Are you good in the room in there? Yeah, they're good? Okay. Welcome everyone, I'm Sharice McHugh. I'm the President and CEO of the Half and Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Bureau. We are bringing you the City Council Forum tonight and I would like to introduce the uh, moderator, Karen Bertrand. She has been with the North and Central San Mateo County League of Women Voters since 2007. She is a board member and has been an election judge in the precincts for many of the years in the area in which she lives. When we do a forum like this, very often the League of Women Voters bring us volunteers who do not live in our district. The reason for that is that they are totally impartial. So this evening, even though I know this is televised, we have good news and bad news. The good news is we have awesome treats from Granola's Coffee House over there for you. The bad news is that at this point in time, all of the toilets are backed up in this building. And I mean the men's and the women's, and I mean every toilet. So I am not going to attempt to do any plumbing. But Ted Adcock, I believe, is open. So we can walk over there until um, we get some help here. So now for the most important question for the night, may I see hands on whether I should tell Karen and update her on the Giants Met scores? <laughs> OK. <laughs> we know that this is also important, maybe equally important. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So we do have Adam Eisner, we do have Harvey Rareback, and we do have Carol uh, Joyce with us as well. So thank you very much, all of you, for coming. And I am now going to turn this over to Karen Bertrand with the League of Women Voters. Thank you so much. OK, and we, in turn, would like to thank the sponsor, Half Moon Bay Chamber of Commerce, uh, for requesting a team from our local league to assist with the forum uh, for the Half Moon Bay City Council. Um, besides myself, uh, the league has sent uh, timekeeper Ann Cutchins, who is over here, and Jean Johnson will be our usher this evening. Uh, the league is indeed a nonpartisan political organization. It's open to both men and women of voting age, and we encourage the informed and active participation of citizens in government. We also thank the candidates and the audience for participating in this evening's event. Candidates have been made aware of the rules in advance, but for the audience, let me briefly review. First, please turn off or silence cell phones. <laughs> and because this is a nonpartisan setting, no campaign literature or other material is permitted in the room. Questions will be submitted by the audience in writing and relayed to my table here by our usher. Please raise your hand if you need pencil and paper or if you have a question ready for pickup and Jean will bring it up to my desk. Um, if several questions are related to the same topic, I may combine them. So you might not hear your question read as, exactly as you have written it. I will try to cover a lot of different topics and try to get to all of your questions. Because I am reading them on the fly, please try and write legibly and keep your questions brief and focused. Questions of a personal nature will not be considered and will be deemed out of order. All candidates will have equal time to speak to the question, even if the, even if the question was addressed to only one candidate. And in the interest of time, please hold your applause till the end, when we'll have a round of applause for all the candidates. In this election, there are three candidates for two open seats. The term of office is four years. As you've already been introduced, Adam Eisen, Carol Joyce, Harvey Rarbach. Each candidate will have three minutes for opening statements, then we'll move to the Q&A session where you have one minute to answer. And then we'll go to closing statements where you'll have two minutes to close. The timekeeper will hold up cards when you have one minute left to speak, 30 seconds, and a stop sign. Because we're so high tech. 
Okay, so just a few minutes ago, the candidates drew lots to determine the order in which they would give their opening statements. Again, three minutes for opening statements. And the first candidate is Carol Joyce. Three minutes. Good evening, and I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the League of Women Voters for um, organizing this forum tonight. And I want to thank you, and especially the Giants fans among us, for <laughs> coming here tonight to hear us um, describe why we're running for office. I am running for office to use my skills in mediation and my legal background to help work with you to address quality of life issues in Half Moon Bay. I grew up in Michigan and after I graduated from law school, my husband and I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area. In 1990, we moved to Moss Beach. Our daughter was born while we were in Moss Beach she attended Farallon View, Cunha, and the Half Moon Bay High School, and I volunteered in her classroom, and I served on PTO boards as well as the high school site council. Twice, job opportunities took us from the Half Moon Bay area, and each time those opportunities brought us back to San Francisco Bay area, and we chose to return to the coast side. In, 19, uh, and in 2014, we moved into the Half Moon Bay city limits. I moved back each time because of the sense of community in Half Moon Bay. The small town character is one of the guiding principles of the general plan, and it's something I want to work with you to preserve as we move forward. I'm running for city council because I care about this community and I believe my mediation and legal experience will make a difference as we work to find solutions to quality of life issues like traffic, housing, and protecting our coastal environment. My mediation experience includes seven years with the Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District where I learned the importance of listening with respect and being open about challenges in reaching a decision. My legal background gives me the skills to analyze complex issues and ask questions. I'll combine my professional experience with 17 years of living with issues of traffic, housing, and protecting the environment as a parent, volunteer, and commuter, commuter to work with you to find solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Adam. I grew up in a small town of Ashland, Oregon. Uh, I met my wife, Katie, while graduating from Cornell University with a Bachelor of Science in Hospitality and Tourism Management. Uh, we came to live in Half Moon Bay to raise our family. Uh, we started off with our two sons, Caleb and Ezra. Uh, then came our grandparents. Uh, then we uh, got our dog in between all that. And then we just ended up with a fish just the other day. Uh, I'm the only candidate with a multi-generational family residing in Half Moon Bay. Everyone asks, Adam, why are you running? This takes a lot of time, it's a lot of energy. And I've given this a lot of thought. The answer is because I am in love with Half Moon Bay. When I walk outside my door, immediately I'm in open space. When I take a bike ride on the trail, I've got the ocean to my right, I've got wildflowers and artichoke orchards to my left. I am blessed to surf in one of the best locations in the world, right here. And one of the things I love most is when I go into the town, when I go shopping at New Leaf, when I go to the farmer's market, it's a town event. I know half the people there. It's the small town charm that, that we talk about in Half Moon Bay that makes this town so special. I want everyone to love Half Moon Bay the way I do. 
Because if they do, they are going to want to protect it and make sure that they shepherd us through the uniquest time period of our history. We have a general plan that we're about to establish. I've been honored to learn, earn the endorsements of numerous agencies and individuals. Today, I just received the endorsement as the only candidate to receive the endorsement of the Half Moon Bay Review and the San Mateo Daily Journal. I have also received the endorsements of Cameron Palmer, Eddie Andrini Jr., the Sierra Club, uh, the Coastside Democrats, the San Mateo Grant Democrats, and the list goes on. Please look at my website to learn more about this. These people believe in my ability to become an effective leader. Why? Because they know I have the passion. I've been to people's doors in this room. I have managed large budgets. I will treat your taxpayer money like it is my own. It's something I need you to take away from this meeting. I have a pr proven track record of building teams, establishing goals, and exceeding them. I hope to earn your vote as well. Thank you. Next, Harvey. I want to thank Karen. Is this working? I did. It's, it's green. Now it's red. It was green. Is this working? You're good. Now. Is this working? Okay. Hi, my name is Harvey Rohrbeck, and uh, I'm In running for city. Into the microphone a little closer. I'm finding the same thing. Is that better? Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> thank you, Sharice. Thank you, City, for providing us with the uh, Emergency Operations Center. Uh, my name is Harvey Rohrbeck, and I'm running for City Council because I really think that I can contribute a lot to the council. Uh, all the candidates are going to talk about transparency, openness, supporting the environment, uh, community leadership, but I have a track record in all of those areas which I think would serve me well on the council. Um, in terms of transparency, for the last three years I've worked on the uh, Coastside Fire Protection District, and the district has just recently won and been awarded by Supervisor Horsley a District of Distinction Award. We're the only Northern California Fire Board to get that distinction. And the reason is that we are open. Our website is available. Our, our agendas are all there. All the uh, meetings are on the web. And we welcome people to come and talk. How many of you have actually uh, had an opportunity to come to a city council meeting. Okay, that, that's pretty good. Uh, if the typical meeting has like four or five uh, uh, members of the public there, I really think it's important that we are open on the council to members of the public. Uh, not just uh, to pay lip service, but to actually care what they have to say. So if I'm elected, what I propose to do is to reduce or eliminate the part of the city council meetings at the beginning, which take forever, which nobody really cares about, where everybody says what he or she did uh, on her, his or her summer vacation, and instead have an opportunity to, to listen to the public, and then at the end of the meeting have a, a sincere chance for the city council people to respond in future agendas to, to, to consider what the public has to say. Um, it's very important that we not uh, disengage from what uh, our constituents really care about. So if you elect me, I can assure you that I will be available. Uh, I will have coffee clutches. We already do have some. Uh, you can uh, call my home phone number. Uh, my website, harveyrarbeck.org, pretty much uh, says what my platform is, and I welcome you to go there. So please consider voting for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we'll move on to the Q&A session. And um, remember, this is where you have one minute to respond. 
Uh, again, if anyone has questions, raise your hand and the usher will give you paper or pick up your questions and bring it up to me. Um, the first question will start with Adam. The city is doing well financially. Do we need more business and development? And if so, why? Uh, yes, thank you. Great question. Uh, first, I do want to point out, and this is something that we didn't get to in the last forum, I, I think it is a tremendous, uh, what we walk into as a city council, uh, prospective city council, the previous city council has done such a great job bringing us to the point that we are at today. And I've learned so much going through this process about how much work, energy, time, effort it takes to run for city council, and how many people you have to meet with in the process. So I, I, I just want to point out at the start, we are walking into an area where we are in a surplus uh, in terms of the uh, financial health of the city. My business background moving forward uh, has a lot to do with how to make this city grow in, from a business perspective. Uh, I want to talk about the Half Moon Bay brand uh, we have a brand in Half Moon Bay. There's the Half Moon Bay Brewing Company uses it, even though, uh, and th there are other companies as well. Thank you. Same question to Harvey. Okay. Certainly, we need to uh, get more business into Half Moon Bay. We need to make the town so desirable that not only local business people, but tourists are attracted to come here. Anything we can do to uh, improve the environment, the commercial uh, attitude, the number of uh, businesses we have would be worth it. Uh, right now, more than half of the money that uh, the city gets comes from the transient occupancy tax. So if we make no good? If, if we make, okay, thank you. Um, if, if we make the city uh, a place that even more people are interested in, in visiting, then uh, that will be a great help in improving our finances. It's just one of the many ideas I have. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, to Carol. Thank you. I agree that this next council will benefit from the financial um, success and the decisions made by earlier councils. We have a budget surplus, but in order to maintain a budget surplus and continue our financial position, we do have to grow and develop in ways that meet the needs of our community. In response to the general plan, seniors asked for businesses that help them age in place. And we do need to support local businesses and tourism to continue to um, have the budget we need to address infrastructure and other needs. Thank you. Thank you. The next question we will start with Carol. This goes in a different direction. The voter asks, Please tell me your opinion about housing homeless people on the coast. Homelessness is a growing issue here on the coast. It is a priority for the current council and it will be a priority for me if I'm elected to the council. The current way of dealing with homelessness is collaborating with the county who has broader resources. They have an outreach team that two or three times reaches out to the homelessness and the community nonprofits make sure that our homeless have opportunities to um, eat and to wash themselves and to access those needs of daily life that the homeless can't on a regular basis. I think it's important that the city council support the nonprofits and I recognize that they have created a human services fund that will do just that. Thank you. Thank you. Next to Adam. Uh, 
Uh, we were at the city council meeting last night, the three of us, and uh, the number one priority that came out of the current city council was addressing homelessness. So that's, that's a good start with the homelessness. My wife works at Stanford, uh, working as a, a psychologist there. And so I, we have quite a bit of back and forth with what to do with homelessness. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of mental illness involved in the homeless population that needs to be addressed as well. So it's not just about, um, it's not just about uh, housing and things like that. We also need to figure out the services involved. Um, but we do need housing as well. And uh, we have to figure out how we want to deal with it from a town perspective. There's one side that says, let's just follow the laws and let's get the, the people in there to kick them out and move onward. And then there's another side that says, let's take care of the people and treat them like a community and uh, do what, what's right from a humanitarian perspective. Thank you. Lastly, to Harvey. This is a tremendously difficult problem. Uh, as uh, Adam just said, it's the number one priority coming up in this fiscal year for the City Council. Uh, what, it, it, we need to balance uh, the, the humanity of people who are homeless with the reality that right now, say, underneath the uh, bridge where there's a, a homeless encampment, it makes it so that people are afraid to drive their bicycles and walk uh, under there. So we, we have to make sure that homelessness does not intrude on the lives of the people who live in the, in the county or in the city. But we, at the same time, we have to begin to uh, figure out a way where homeless people who don't want to go to shelters for the most part, they feel uh, that their rights would be uh, abrogated. Uh, we need to take care of the people, but at the same time, we can't let them uh, dominate our uh, environment. Thank you so much. The next question, we will start with Harvey. What is your plan to improve or build trails or paths to schools? This is a very important question. We don't have a enough trails, we don't have enough interlocking trails, we don't have a way that people say in Frenchman's Creek can get to the high school safely. Uh, so we need to build more trails, particularly on the east side of Highway 1. We need to have a uh, master plan that really maps out where the trails belong. Um, this is something that we don't really have up to now and we we need to create, as part of the circulation element in the general plan, a way to get around town, not just uh, along Highway 1, but between neighborhoods. Uh, we need to get people out of their cars and in, uh, walking and taking bicycles and uh, public transit whenever possible. Thank you. Adam? So uh, the number one reason people cite for not biking in Half Moon Bay more is safety. That's the number one reason why. The trails master plan that Harvey talked about is something that we have started as a community. We have trails that exist already. The object is to connect them into the places where we can use them the most. The high school is a great example. No easy, safe way to get to the high school by bike. The middle school is another great example. Hatch, where my children attend school, is a school that you can bike to safely. And if you look at the bike racks at that school, they're filled. There's 200 bikes in those schools. People in Half Moon Bay want to bike. I think it's a help for traffic because we've got traffic congestion problems, especially related to the schools. If we can take those, those cars off the road, have people biking to their schools, I think it'll make a huge difference from a traffic perspective as well. So I think... Uh, it's something we need to focus on as a community, and I'm very excited to increase the trail usage in Half Moon Bay. Thank you. And we'll go to Carol, and if you could pull, pull your microphone a little closer and maybe pull it down closer to you, it would be helpful. Thank you. Trails are important to all of us in Half Moon Bay, but I believe that safe, 
access to schools, especially, as Harvey mentioned, on going north on Highway 1 is critical. I cringe every time I see students walking along the side, parents pushing strollers right there on the side of Highway 1. And for that reason, I support the current Highway 1 improvement plan that includes connecting trails both in that area of the high school and, the, um, and near Ocean Colony so that there are safer ways for students, seniors, parents, and others to access Half Moon Bay. Thank you. Next question is about the new library, and we'll start, we'll start with Carol. What is your position on the new library? And if you support it, how do you propose the city establish a lasting fund to maintain the library? I am a supporter of the library. Libraries were very important to me growing up, and I welcome this opportunity to provide the current and future generations of Half Moon Bay residents with a library that will provide them access to new technology and give them a gathering place. With regard to a fund to maintain the library, I will rely on the friends of the library to help raise funds as well as plan for the city council to support the library as the funding permits. I also will rely on the joint powers authority and the county because this is really a co-side library and as you know the county is paying half of the building costs, and they will continue to help us support the new library. Thank you. And to Harvey. I certainly support the new library. Um, I think it's a necessary amenity that we really need to have and will have. Um, I think that the, the support going forward uh, is going to be a sinking fund that's already been approved that the city will be paying for on a yearly basis to make sure that we don't run into the kind of situation we have now where the library just uh, was deteriorated to the point of being dangerous. Um, so what, what I don't support is cost overruns. And that is going to be something that if I'm on the council, I will do my best to make sure that the $24 million cost of the library is not exceeded uh, and that we really keep our eyes on the, uh, that budget and not allow it to get out of hand. Thank you. The next question will start with Adam. May I answer that one, actually? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I thought I had you already. I'm terribly yeah. sorry. No worries. Please no do. worries at all. No worries at all. <laughs> uh, so as someone with children in, in the public schools, uh, the library is hugely important to the future. I'm very excited for it. Uh, my children, we don't have a TV in our house, uh, so we spend a lot of time reading quite a few books, and they're both in the Spanish Immersion Program. So the, the need to get books that don't have um, English in them is, is very high for us. Uh, in terms of a lasting fund for the library. I think you both talked to some things. I want to I continue on that track. Uh, one of the things we need to do is we need to also get some grants. We need to write some grants to be able to help support the library. Friends of the library are helpful as well. The county's helpful. And then we just signed a PLA with the new, uh, with, in terms of the building of the library. And we do need to make sure that we do not have cost overruns on the library. It's one of the reasons I think we signed the PLA, and we will do our best to make sure that the library is built uh, correctly the first time. Thank you so much. And again, my apologies. Um, we will start with you for the next question. This is on a different uh, subject. Uh, the number of households in Half Moon Bay that have families with children under 18 has fallen from 41% in the 80s to 28% in 2010. Do you have any proposals that would help attract and retain families? Mm 
<laughs> that is a great question. Uh, from my perspective, Half Moon Bay seems like a burgeoning family scene as uh, most of the people I know have families in Half Moon Bay and it seems to be expanding. Um, for the last 20 years, I think that more families have been moving to Half Moon Bay. I feel like the 18-year-old segment leaves Half Moon Bay because at that point, that's when you're off to college and you also want to find jobs. We do not have very many high-paying jobs in Half Moon Bay. Uh, pe most of the people that live here now need to work over the hill and able to support their lifestyle. So if we can get some small, very small businesses to uh, move into Half Moon Bay and use Half Moon Bay as their, as their primary residence, I think that might help keep some people in, after they graduate, uh, be able to stay in Half Moon Bay afterwards. Thank you, and next to Carol. Thank you. I believe that Half Moon Bay is attractive to families. We have good schools. We have the Boys and Girls Clubs going up, the skate park, the library. I think the challenges for young families are the challenges for um, many of us here, and that's the uh, traffic and affordable housing. I think um, when we say affordable housing, we, we mean income level housing, but also workforce housing and other programs that may help young families make their um, down payment. And those are the sorts of issues I want to explore that will give people a leg up into the housing market while we work on building uh, housing that meets their needs. Thank you. Thank you, and Harvey? Uh, I think the primary reason that we have fewer families is they can't afford to live here. And the reason they can't afford to live here mostly is the enormous cost of housing, not just in Half Moon Bay, but in the whole Bay Area. This is a very, very difficult problem. This is something we have to work on. Affordable housing is not going to be a simple solution, but I would, if I'm on the council, work very hard to make sure that we can get more affordable housing, more workforce housing, more maybe tiny houses, infill, anything that will make it possible to live here uh, at a reason with a reasonable income. Uh, right now, it's, it's extremely difficult, and that's why our population is aging, because they can afford the, the cost of living, primarily housing, where young families have uh, a, dr a tremendous difficulty in uh, staying here. Thank you. Harvey, we'll start with you again on this next question. There is a proposed new hotel next to James Ford that will bring in uh, almost a million dollars in transient occupancy tax per year. Are you in favor of this project? I have spoken at the Planning Commission saying that this is a terrible idea. It's the gateway to our southern community. And if I've also spoken at the Planning Commission against the uh, what ended up to be the KW real estate agency as a gateway to our community. I think people coming into our community should not be uh, bombarded with a, a hotel that has 250 rooms that will add to traffic. Uh, it's just in the wrong place uh, and does not uh, make, is, doesn't distinguish what Half Moon Bay should be all about. I think we should try to get Mr. Jameson to make a visitor serving center, a, uh, a nice gateway, a low, low impact uh, green, something that would be desirable there. Thank you. Next to Adam. So the number one income source into Half Moon Bay is the transient occupant ta occupancy tax. It's called the TOT. Uh, I am in the hotel business. Uh, the transient occupancy tax represents 40% of Half Moon Bay's budget. Uh, the property tax is 21% and the sales tax is 17%, just to give perspective. We are heavily reliant on the transient occupancy tax as is right now in Half Moon Bay. 
Now, hotels, especially of this size, bring traffic. They bring an, an, an entry aesthetic to Half Moon Bay that changes the, the way that we enter our town. So I think it's important as a town that we balance these things out. I am not necessarily for or against this. I would want to talk to the people of Half Moon Bay and really learn what the opinion is of the public before we move forward as a council to say yay or nay on these types of things. Because as a council member, we represent you. You are the stakeholders. So it is our job to know what, what the public thinks. Thank you. And Carol? Thank you. I agree that this is a topic that we need to reach out to the public to understand the different points of views and look for um, common ground and then go back to um, the developer who proposed the hotel and see if we can influence the plan, discuss what the community wants, and end up with a project that um, benefits Half Moon Bay and the developer. Thank you. Thank you. And this next question, we'll start with Adam. Can you tell us a bit about any other elective offices you have held and other community involvement you've experienced? All right. So. Uh, for my job, I work for Marriott, the hotel company. I have overseen a, uh, a very large team of people. I have overseen a very large budget that I've dealt with. And uh, I've put together teams and exceeded goals. It's one of the reasons why I've been the sales leader of the year in my company multiple times. In terms of what I do in this community, uh, I volunteer in the schools. Uh, and I just, right before this, was coaching both my son's soccer teams. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's the effort that I put in on that level. With, with both of those things, it gives me access to a community that does not necessarily usually have a voice at the table, and that's the Latino community here in Half Moon Bay. We talk about that a lot. So it's something that I say that I'm not reaching out to them. I'm actually immersed in it. I coach the kids' soccer teams. I, I volunteer in the school and speak the language proficiently enough to be able to continue that conversation. Thank you. And Carol? As I mentioned, I was appointed as the volunteer ombudsperson for the Mid-Peninsula Regional Open Space District. I served there for seven years, um, assisting staff in resolving disputes that they couldn't resolve themselves. Many of those disputes were from um, users who had different ideas about how to best use the trails. When I lived in Fernandina Beach, Florida, I was appointed to the Community Relations Board with the mission of bringing the community together to form one community. And I was appointed to the Planning Advisory Commission. When I was appointed to the commission, is when I realized the difference between being in the audience at a city council or planning commission meeting and being on the dais. On the dais, you have the responsibility to listen to all points of view, understand the laws and regulations, and make the best decision. And that's what I'll do as council member for Half Moon Bay. Thank you. And Harvey, same question. Uh, I've been elected twice to the Coastside Fire Protection District. I've been elected to the executive committee of the Sierra Club. Uh, I am the coastal issues rep for the Sierra Club. I've been elected to my, uh, the Sandy Cove Homeowners Association. I've been elected as uh, president of the Coastside Democrats, and now I'm on the board as past president. Uh, so those are a few of the uh, positions that involve some kind of election. I also work uh, as a tax aide for the uh, AARP, helping seniors with their taxes. I've been doing that for three years. Um, so I hope that, you know, since I've been retired for the last four years, I've had a chance to serve the community, and now I'd like to serve the community on the city council. Thank you. And Harvey, we'll start with you on this next question. Do you have a vision for the Beechwoods 
and could council consider affordable or market rate senior housing for that area? Uh, the, the Coastal Commission 10 years ago said that maybe 19 houses could be built on Beechwood. Since then, there's probably more intrusion of wetlands. So there really isn't a lot of place on Beechwood to build uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, Beechwood could be a good place as a, a, a community center to uh, look at the environment. Uh, you could put trails there. Maybe you could put a few houses there. It's not clear to me. Uh, but it's just not a, a place where uh, much building could legally uh, occur. So we have to be very careful. We have to check what we can and cannot build there. And I, I think we need to do that first. Thank you. Same question, Carol. I agree that Beechwood is an opportunity that we need to explore and have a community discussion on. I think that senior housing would be an actual idea if there is the room and the space to do so. I think that it would, um, we would have to also address issues of getting the seniors into Half Moon Bay and to make sure that um, their needs were supported. But I do think it's an opportunity we need to discuss. Thank you, and Adam? Yeah, when we talk about Beechwood, we need to talk about the history of Beechwood. Uh, we all know the history of what happened was kind of a mess, realistically. What we as a city council would adopt is actually a very good situation. The, we no longer owe money on Beechwood. Uh, we own the property, and w with regards to the water rights, uh, I've, been, I've been in talks to learn that the water rights are not with us, obviously, but, uh, but people are willing to make negotiations with those water rights if we came up with the correct plan. Uh, it is an opportunity. I agree with that. The way to use it, I don't think any of us know entirely yet uh, what part of it is developable is up for debate. I've heard everything from 19 units to 75 units, so we need to study that. We need to understand what we actually have, uh, where the wetlands ends, where it begins, how to use that property, property effectively. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to the next question. Again, going in a different direction. We'll start with Carol. How can council do a better job of supporting city staff? City staff has um, been very generous with their time. They conducted a candidate orientation where we learned about what each department head does. And I was very impressed with the professionalism and dedication of city staff. After um, Beechwood and uh, the Great Recession where the council made very difficult decisions, to keep Half Moon Bay afloat. We need to focus on bringing staff back in-house and building the resources and in-house knowledge to go forward. And I would support staff's recommendations in that regard and look to staff for their insights on how we can continue to uh, grow city staff and help them be responsive to the community. Thank you. Same question to Harvey. Um, it's probably not well known, but the city council's only employees are the city manager and the city attorney. So the city council's main responsibility is to hire a good city manager who could lead a team, and I certainly think that that's important. Uh, 60% of our budget right now is spent on outside consultants. We have consultants from over the hill to do everything from planning um, to uh, parks and rec. Uh, we need to bring back many of the functions that right now we outsource uh, where it's appropriate uh, to have the city 
feel like the people who are working there have some skin in the game, have some interest in the community because they live here and they work here and they will develop uh, camaraderie with each other. Thank you. And lastly, to Adam. So one of the things I specialize in my job is building relationships. It's, it's absolutely imperative to the success of what I do. And as far as I'm concerned, the job of city council is to build relationships with the community. I'm back to what I said before. You are the stakeholders. We are here to gather the information. If we can go out and bring that information to city council, uh, to the professionals who work on staff, and that is our job is to relate to the community, bring that information in. I held, as part of my campaign, I held a get together, a meet and greet in 12 neighborhoods, every neighborhood in Half Moon Bay. And what I did is I received the input from the people in the community. The more I can bring that input to city staff, that supports city staff, helps their decisions, and then brings it back out to the people because we're acting on behalf of the people. That's what we're here to do. Thank you. News flash on the Giants game. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom of the eighth, zero to zero. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who's pitching still? That's a <laughs> question. That'd be a good question. Next news flash. We'll we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, and we'll start with Adam on this next one. It's sort of along the same lines as as we just addressed. Um, what are your current observations of the uh, s city senior staff and the direction the city is going? So that's a good question. There, there's lots of opinions uh, about how senior staff is functioning in Half Moon Bay. Uh, my job as an executive has always been to, if elected, or when I take a new job, is to go in with an absolute open mind. Uh, you have to learn how everything functions. There's a lot to learn as a city council member. There's a lot to learn in every new job that you take. So the job, as far as I'm concerned, is to go in with an open mind to understand the various input that's come from all different community members and then to, uh, to make decisions based on those factors uh, as, as time permits. Uh, there has been a good deal of great things that have happened with city staff, and there has been some things where there are people that believe that they've missed the mark at times. So we have uh, both sides of the issue, and it's important to go in with an open mind. Thank you. Same question to Carol. Thank you. My observation of uh, senior city staff is that they um, are dedicated to serving Half Moon Bay residents, and they are bringing their past experiences to use best practices. I've seen that in terms of the budget, the way they are improving that process to make it easier to understand, to help include the public in the decisions. And I also see it in the area of risk management where they are improving the analysis of risk management and helping the public understand why risk management is important. I look forward to working with them to learn more about how city government is run and how I can support them in the best interest of the Half Moon Bay community. Thank you, and Harvey. I, I agree with Adam that we I would go in with a, an open mind to find out what city staff really, uh, especially senior staff, is all about, uh, whether or not they're su supportive of the community, whether the community is supportive of them. Uh, we've had a lot of turnover in senior staff at Half Blue Bay. I'd like to find out why, and I'd like to encourage some stability. Um, but here's a newsflash. I don't know everything. Uh, and uh, I'd like to find out more, and I will. Thank you. We'll start with Carol for the next question. Should you be elected, what would be your priorities for your first 100 days in office? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
my priorities will be to um, use my mediation and legal experience. I'm committed to an open and transparent decision-making pro process. I want to reach out to the members of the community, and I want to do so in um, a meaningful way so that if a neighborhood or community is impacted by a decision, that we work with staff to make sure they know that that matter is coming before the city council and they have an opportunity to speak to the issue. I think this is very important with the uh, general plan and lo local coastal plan update. That's been going on for several years and it may take at least a year or more before we resolve it. And so I will use my experience to make sure that the public stays engaged and that we find a way to make this very complicated process down to a level where the public knows the consequences of the decisions we're making. Thank you. Same question to Adam. As with every job I've ever done in my entire life, I think at the start, the most important thing to do is to listen. It's what I've been doing as the start of this campaign. It's what I plan to do moving forward. It is important to get out. It is to understand the perspectives of different people involved, get the community input, learn from people who have done the job in the past, learn from the Chamber of Commerce. There is so much that we don't know as we walk into these positions. Uh, to move forward quickly is something that needs to be curtailed. You need to learn, and that, that's the second part, is to gain quite a bit of knowledge about how the process works and how to move things forward. Because we may have ideas about how it works, but once you get in, in a lot of positions I've been in in my life, you learn a different perspective, and it's important to take the time to understand what you're doing before you act upon anything. So that's the listen and learn. Thank you. Lastly, to Harvey. Uh, I have two important priorities, which I would like to do as soon as possible. Contrast to Adam, uh, I think time is wasting when it comes to the general plan and local coastal plan updates. They need to be done. They need to be uh, certified by the Coastal Commission within a year or two. Uh, so I think that would be my highest priority, to make sure that the guiding principles that the citizens have already enunciated are, in fact, uh, embedded in a, the way the uh, general plan update cr is created. The second uh, priority that I have is to keep the infrastructure uh, improved in Half Moon Bay. There's so much that needs to be done with bridges, with trails, with coastal erosion that's affecting waterways. Uh, we really need to make sure that uh, our town is uh, well maintained. So those, prior those are my two main priorities right now. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with Carol. Traffic always seems to be a problem in Half Moon Bay. How would you address fixing some traffic problems? Would you be opening, open to adding any uh, new lanes or left and right turn lanes, et cetera? Well, I agree that um, traffic is an issue and it impacts uh, our lives daily. I think the um, solutions will come in um, two stages. I think we need to address the uh, pinch points and the uh, circulation that's, be that's being proposed in the Highway 1 Improvement Plan. That includes moving mer merge lanes, adding traffic signals, and, and I want to understand what the community feels about that. I also think that uh, trails and uh, safe bike paths are an important consideration for traffic. And it also needs to be addressed in the general plan and the local coastal plan as we look forward to, um, to how to address traffic in the future as well as today. Thank you, and Harvey? When I first moved here and I was stuck on Highway 92, I complained to my boss, you know, what's going on? He lived near me. 
And he said, thank your lucky stars that you are able to get here, that, you, that Highway 92 is not a five-lane highway, because if it were, you would be going into a place that you wouldn't want to end up. So traffic is undoubtedly an awful problem. Everybody complains about it, uh, me too. But there are only s certain incremental solutions that I would propose. Uh, number one, I really think we need to reinstitute school busing, if at all possible. That will help on the weekdays. We need to synchronize the lights on Highway uh, 1 and uh, Main Street and the Highway 92. That's simple and should have been done a while ago. We need to have a sheriff here on the weekends uh, to direct traffic at those uh, intersections. Thank you. Did I get everyone on that one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, just checking. <laughs> uh, thank you. That was well done. Um, there, there's no magic bullet, obviously, for traffic. We would have addressed it already if we knew what to do uh, as a town. Uh, we do have good ideas, uh, as, as the three of us, I think, are, are relatively aligned on this issue. Uh, the circulation plan, it's one of the elements of the, gener of the general plan. In that, we're going to talk about the trails master plan. We talked about that earlier, how to connect that aspect of it, which I think can deal with some of the weekday traffic. Uh, one of the things I want to say is we, we should feel blessed to live in a location that is so amazing that people want to be here at all times. So let's, let's take that perspective in and then also understand that a good deal of the money that we get in this town comes from tourism. Uh, we do need to deal with the traffic and uh, I like the busing for schools. I do understand that obviously costs a lot of money. Uh, roundabouts exist and look, we are not the first town to deal with this problem. I think we need to go out and look at other towns that have experienced the same exact problem. They've implemented roundabouts in some of those towns and there's other ideas we can take from them as well. Thank you so much. Um, so that we can adjourn on time, this will be the last question before closing statements. And we'll start with Adam. This last question came in and it sort of uh, is on the heels of the one you just responded to. But how, do, how is the best way to balance tourism and keep our small town identity? Yeah, the key on tourism, we already have the tourists coming into Half Moon Bay. We all know that. They're here. So the object is capitalizing on the tourists that come. Uh, currently, I have a belief that many of the tourists come in, they've got uh, coolers, they've got, they head down to the beach, they have their day down at the beach. Unfortunately, I live next to Poplar Beach. They leave a lot of garbage on the beach and then they leave. So we're not capturing those tourist dollars. Uh, one of the things that I have talked about before is initiating a shuttle that goes around the town from place to place, helping to alleviate traffic, also helping to capture tourism dollars by stopping at key locations along the way. Uh, I think we could incorporate that into the county as well because there's areas up north of us that would also like to have a bunch of people stopping in their neighborhoods ready to spend money. And that's, that's a way a lot of people like to travel nowadays. They come to the hotels and they want to be able to easily get around. Thank you. Next to Harvey. Um, those two questions are kind of intertwined. Uh, if we, w we need to keep our small town character in order to have people want to come here. It's a destination. So we need to do everything we can to make sure that Half Moon Bay stays as uh, charming a coastal town as possible. Um, and then the tourists will come then uh, they'll spend their money here, and uh, then we have to deal with some traffic issues, but uh, that's sort of another matter. So we really need to make sure that the guiding principles are really respected, and we go forward as uh, a town that we would like to uh, live in. Thank you. Lastly, Carol. Thank you. I think that balancing a tourism and a small town character is important for several reasons. One, as Adam pointed out, the balance of our budget comes from the transit occupancy tax. So we need to support tourism, but we also have to support local needs. 
and I've heard concerns about parking in our neighborhoods and trash left behind, and I will work to collaborate with the various agencies responsible for the parks and the beaches and the neighbors to make sure that our quality of life is not unnecessarily impacted by the visitors that we're welcoming to Half Moon Bay. Thank you. Thank you all and to the audience as well. Before we move to closing statements and to let the candidates catch their breath, I'll make a few announcements. Remember that you can find additional information about the candidates for this office and all candidates for offices throughout the county on the League Sponsors, League Sponsored Voters Edge website. That's votersedge.org. Also a reminder that membership in the League is open to both men and women of voting age. If you are interested in helping your community with forums such as this, voter registration drives, ballot measure pros and cons presentations. We do have membership brochures in the back of the room, or you can call our office at 650-342-5853. And lastly, um, a, a note on the election in general. Remember that uh, voting day is November 8th. Uh, if you do vote by mail, make sure you complete your ballot and get it in on time. But remember that you don't need to mail it. If you are a mail-in ballot uh, person, you can complete it at home and walk it into any precinct on election day within the county and drop it in the ballot box. I would add that California law does allow you to vote during the 29 days prior to the election. Uh, that means beginning October 11th this year. So you can vote at 40 Tower Road, San Mateo Elections Office, at 555 County Center at the County Clerk Recorder's Office in Redwood City, and 840 West Orange Avenue at the South San Francisco Library. The hours that you can vote are Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, as well as Saturday the 29th and Saturday, November 5th from 10 to 3. A more information and details on voting and the election can be found at the county site, shapethefuture.org. Now we'll move to closing remarks. Aren't you hosting a, uh, uh, no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. So we will move on to the closing remarks and let the candidates wrap up so we can end on time. Um, we will go in reverse order from opening statements. Again, each candidate will have two minutes for their closing. Timekeeper will remind you when you have a minute and 30 seconds, and then when to stop. Um, so in reverse order, we will start with Harvey. Thank you for the opportunity to um, address the people here. I think that the city council has an enormous responsibility in shaping the future of Half Moon Bay, and I want to be available to you to hear what you have to say about what you want to the uh, city direction to be. I know I am very involved in green projects. Some of you may know about the Peninsula Clean Energy uh, Initiative where you don't have to spend money uh, with PG&E, but you can instead work on the uh, uh, get to get clean energy from a county-run source. I'm on the Peninsula Clean Energy Advisory Committee. I've spoken at the city council meetings. I urge you, when you get your notice, to see if you can get 100% renewable energy. That's just one direction that we really need to go in. The other direction we need is to make sure that we preserve the small town character. Open space where it can legally be kept, we need to work to keep our open space to keep our bluff tops, to make sure that this is a desirable place where people want to come with their children and stay because that is what makes Half Moon Bay such a destination. So please consider the, the environment. Please consider voting for me to help the environment. I appreciate everything you could do to do that. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Next to Adam. Thank you all for coming tonight. It's a, it's a privilege to see you all in this room. Uh, one of the portions of my campaign that was so very interesting to me was hosting these neighborhood get-togethers. Again, we went to 12 neighborhoods. We went door to door in every neighborhood. We tried to bring out as many people as we could. And when we hosted a party in each neighborhood, a, a meet the candidate get-together, it, so, it was so very interesting to learn that each neighborhood had its own unique issues, ha had their own unique interests. And then it was also interesting to learn all the interests that aligned. And there were some that aligned amongst all 12 neighborhoods. Uh, my goal would be to conduct such a thing if, if, if I was elected on city council once a month. We have 12 months in a year. We have 12 neighborhoods in Half Moon Bay. I would like to get out to each neighborhood and make sure that we are serving the people as we should. I'd also like to be getting as much input as I possibly can. As, as you know, it's hard to get people out to these events. I also intend to build on the relationships I have forged with Jerry Hill, Don Horsley, Cameron Palmer, Ocean Colony LLC, uh, as well as other regulatory agencies, which are key players in moving any project forward here in Half Moon Bay. In order to get any project done, we need these relationships established. If you are looking for someone who has an energy and a passion for Half Moon Bay, a proven track record of exceeding goals, a multi-generational interest in Half Moon Bay's future, and someone, lastly, who will treat your tax dollars as if they are his own, then I am your person. I hope to have earned your vote this evening. Thank you. And lastly, to Carol. Thank you. I appreciate your attention this evening. I'm running for city council to use my mediation and legal experience to work with you to address the quality of life issues here in Half Moon Bay. I'll bring a fresh perspective and new experience to the city council. In endorsing me, the San Mateo Daily Journal said that my legal and mediation background gives me the knowledge and temperament to successfully navigate nuanced and involved discussions about the city's present and future plans. I also have endorsements from Senator Jerry Hill, Assembly Members Rich Gordon and Kevin Mullen, Mayor Rick Kowalczyk, and the San Mateo County Central Labor Council. I'm honored to have their endorsements and other endorsements that you can find on my website, electcaroljoyce.com, but the most important endorsement comes from Half Moon Bay voters, and I would be honored to have your vote on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do have a news flash on the game. Giants just, oh, everybody knows already. <laughs> so Mad Bum is still pitching. Giants are ahead, 3 nothing. Uh, top of the ninth. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, that does conclude our evening. I'd ask you all to join me in a round of applause to thank the candidates and our sponsors. Half <laughs> Thank you.